Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 221219.4. On the 19th day of Moistmas, my whole crew gave to me a space button, a trouser popper, and a blob of blue tack. I swear I'm gonna start shoving these up the NPC crew's asses. They need to do better. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Where Are They Now? This one's a bit impromptu as I had not planned to do this. Today we're going to be discussing Tess Holiday because yes, even though she turned 37 this year, she's actually still around. Busy reminding everyone she went through various forms of anorexia and other issues she faces, while also complaining about the world's beauty standards, where she pioneered the trending hashtag F your beauty standards. So what I thought I'd do today, because we have covered Tess a few times in the past, is go through very quickly what she has done and then go to where she is more commonly seen as a means of responding to some content she has produced because she is, in her own right, a creator of sorts. In January of this year, Tess Holliday had indicated she had been struggling with her body image, which might seem surprising but in reality is not. Everyone has body image problems, we're all self-conscious about something. For me, it is my gigantic feet because I trip over quite a lot. It's quite irritating and a tad embarrassing. So while sharing snaps of our holiday, she said, I'm going to be honest, I've been really struggling with body image in a way I've never experienced. It's been almost debilitating because even though y'all see me out having fun, it sometimes takes me so much work and energy just to be able to leave the house. I'm the kind of gal that always wants my photo taken until lately, and these are some of the first photos I've taken in a while where I saw myself in them and was kind. I'm working on it, soaking up this family time and feeling grateful even when it's tough. Well, if ever there's an opportunity for doubt to set in and perhaps a change of heart, this would have been an opportune moment. Sadly, no. She also in the month of January spoke about her anorexia recovery, indicating that people were lying when they said that she didn't have it citing a different type of anorexia that can be experienced by everyone, of course it can be, but she's still the same person who works up a sweat in a gym and still weighs however much she weighs. I call into question what she's actually doing in the gym. To further prove the point that she is going through a recovery from anorexia, she said in a statement, I feel grateful that I'm tough enough to talk about this, but I've since taken a lot of steps backward in my recovery. I've regressed. I haven't eaten today. It's 11 o'clock and I've had two sips of coffee and I feel sick. It's been extremely hard on my mental and physical health. And as is custom on the internet, when you show even the slightest vulnerability, the internet turns into a gigantic circle jerk of empaths, which is totally code for dickheads. Hi, I'm an empath. When Tess Holliday had found out she was anorexic, she was actually surprised and acted as if we would all be too. Turns out, we were. We were very surprised. We were very surprised for one gigantic reason. No, not your size, but because of your size. Yep, I said that. To further cement how she was surprised by this, she did actually explain how, as a child, she started overeating around the age of 10 because, you know, southern food and given crackers and soup and she just gorge on it. I mean, I grew up poor, and if the opportunity arose, I'd take advantage as well, but mostly so I could survive the winter, because central heating wasn't as much of a thing then, and nor was double glazing, insulated homes, blankets thicker than a bedsheet. You know, the usual thing for impoverished families. Maybe that's why I'm not fat. Skipping ahead from April to June of 2022. Yeah, we're rushing through this. I want to get to those videos. You'll understand why soon. In a recent posted TikTok, she's active there, by the way, Tess Holiday responded to a user who trolled her with the comment, I've been following really big fat people so I could see how others see me. Was so grossed out, I lost 150 pounds so far. To that person, congratulations on losing essentially a welterweight plus three pounds worth of weight. You should be very proud of yourself. You essentially lost one Amir Khan. How did Tess Holiday respond to this? She replied by saying you are seeking out content of larger bodied individuals. 
as a way to make yourself feel better, which is kind of a weird thing to do in general, especially when I can guarantee a lot of the larger bodies and individuals you're following have happy, full lives, not despite them being fat, but they just are. They just exist. You're right, but the wonderful thing about not having the additional 150 pounds is flexibility, durability, agility, stamina, health, longevity, intelligence. And yes, choice is fine, but the great thing is, when you don't weigh that extra 150 pounds, you can bend down and do your own shoelaces without having to use Velcro straps or a pulley system. You can do up a belt without having to worry about your belly overhanging. You might also find, with 150 pounds less on your body, your back doesn't hurt as much. Your hips might not either, your knees too. You might find the way you walk isn't as peculiar or in any form of need of assistance, like a stick, multiple sticks, a Zimmer frame, or the one that has a stool built into it so you can sit down, or a mobility scooter. Do I need to carry on? In July of 2022, as it must have been a bit of a dry news month, Yahoo News reported on the fact Tess Holiday turned 37. Congratulations, you're a year older than me. Where for her birthday celebration, she declared herself a hottie. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I'm sure someone agrees. A feeder, no doubt. In the month of August, Tess Holiday urged her fans to stay away from plastic surgery. On her TikTok, she's developed a reputation for promoting body positivity. And she said, Now listen, I'm pro plastic surgery. I'm pro do what you want with your body. I have Dolly Parton tattooed on me for a reason. I'm just here to remind you guys that these are trends. Don't do anything to your body to fit into a trend. Don't do it. Well, I don't think you're going to find a surgery that can be considered the ultimate quintessential contrarian surgery. Everything in its own way can be considered a trend. Your advice is faulty. Yes, I'm going to be pedantic enough to point that out. And Dolly Parton, why would you do that? She's totally real. Everything about her is. Both of them are. <laughs> Later in the month of August, Tess Holiday took to Instagram. The reason why was to talk about a trend that has come back that she does not agree with. With a post in particular, she shared, Looking back at older photos of my career and life have been something so painful for me that I would squint my eyes nearly closed when looking through my camera roll. Other than my body changing, one of the most difficult realizations was the deep sadness in my eyes. Even in my happy moments, it's painfully obvious. Was I going to look back on my work and feel like I never got to give my best or be fully present because of the abuse surrounding me? I feared until recently that maybe I had accomplished my wildest dreams and never got to fully enjoy it all. Spoiler, I was wrong and the best is yet to come. Adding, societally we still hold smaller bodies as the ideal definition of having it all together. There is talk of a shift in fashion, where the ultra thin body type is going to be the new trend. But what if we allowed the idea to permeate our collective that we having it all together, healing and being happy exists in bodies like mine? Healing deep inner wounds and leveling up for some means our bodies will inevitably get larger. It's crucial that as things continue to shift in our culture, that we give ourselves grace and compassion. Adding that while her body is softer and her jawline is rounder, her heart is stronger than it was when she was smaller. Adding that she is also more confident and kinder now. Is patronizing considered a kinder trait? What about condescension, delusion, lies, deceit, idiocy? Or are we working under the mantra, it's cruel to be kind? Good to be cruel and kind, or cruelness is a kindness? As far as this idea of ultra thin, I'd love to know what the exact definition of it is. There are a lot of models, yes, that are quite slim. It is, for a lot of them, a choice. Certainly the bigger names choose how they look. And they want to be that way, they don't have the body type to be you. And I know, I know, you're latching onto another aspect of that industry where some do actually shred quite aggressively. An unhealthy way of approaching that particular field. There are demons in everyone's closets, in every type of lifestyle, 100%. But society is not going to hold, for the sake of it, they're not going to hold you to the equal standard of someone slimmer because you are not the major market. You're a big market, but you are not the market that the elite want to champion. Additionally, you mentioned metaphorically healing deep inner wounds. You might find, and this is a novel idea, the bigger you get, the higher the chance the wound that you can't heal, even if metaphorical, can only be cured at a veterinary surgery. That's the only fat joke I'm gonna make, all right? And I'm allowed to make one. 
Earlier on, I mentioned that Tess Holliday is now a lot more active on social media. More notably, she is a content creator on TikTok. And I thought what we'd do is take a look at three TikToks that I plucked that I found rather interesting. And we can talk about some of the points she makes within them that I find fascinating. Let us now begin with a video that she has a very strong opinion on with a word that is banned in her home. I am in the middle of cooking breakfast and I wanted to share something that happened to me last night because hopefully it can help some of y'all. So, someone that cares about me a great deal came over to see me last night. And when they came over, I wasn't feeling well. I was having like low blood sugar, all the things, all the things that you don't want. Would you look at this? We're having a story time moment mukbang. So anyway, very innoc innocently, they said to me, well, have you eaten? And I said, yeah, I had some pizza earlier. And they said, you need to eat something like a bit more healthy. Oh my God, what a monster. Healthy, that's a four letter word. Now, there are a few words that I don't allow when somebody comes into my house and healthy is one of them now rather than play the remaining two minutes of that video i think we got all we needed from that short amount alone from this we can tell a number of things firstly you don't support free speech two you're easily offended and three you're definitely in california the fourth one obviously being the four letter word healthy the profanity of all profanities on to the second video I genuinely mean this with every bone in my fat body. But the thing that I find most unfortunate for people that don't like big bitches, such as myself, is what they miss out on by not having folks like us in their life. Clean up crew at a buffet. How about the guarantee that the gravitational pull is down and not across? Which by extension also means that for a change, their center of attention. I can't imagine cutting off an entire group of people and just saying, I don't want to get to know you because of how you look or exist in the world. Like, imagine how many blessings I'd be blocking myself from. And honestly, I think that's why half of them are miserable to begin with, because they don't have any fat friends and they're just going around, you know. Oddly enough, within my friendship circle, I am the largest of the three to five of us. Two are kind of in and out, but none of us are fat. It's just a size thing. And it's not because I don't want a fat friend or that I don't want a fat friend either. It's just one of those random things. Then again, most of my mother's side of the family are quite large. So... No. There's too much grumpy. We're English. Fat is not synonymous with happiness in this country. Fat is synonymous with mobility scooters. You know, as wild and as loud as folks are about me being wrong, and spewing misinformation. I just wanna know where I told people not to eat their fruits and vegetables. Everyone buckle up. Tess Holliday is about to educate us on what a balanced meal is. When earlier she spoke about her meal being so far of the day, pizza, which as everyone knows is a balanced meal. Literally, it takes two seconds to Google what I have pulled up right here, talking about why you need carbs, proteins, and fat. Also, What's that say? The three main nutrients in a balanced diet are... Before she cut away so quickly from the comment she was uh, alluding to, the three main nutrients in a balanced diet. It had four. Vitamins, carbohydrates, proteins, healthy fats. Of course, you also include minerals, antioxidants, starches, fibers, and so on. Do I need to now reference that pizza again? Or how about those bagels or that cream cheese you were putting on them? For the sake of it, it can all be shortened down to proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Depending on the nature of the diet you are on, of course, some of that will be removed. It is always possible to exist on all three of them and be healthy throughout your lifetime. It depends on the body type, the activity of the person, of course. In the case of Tess Holiday, no, again, pizza. How dare a fat woman who actually lives in her body and experiences her disordered eating every single day know anything about diets. In the context of this, I don't believe it's so much a how dare you know anything about it. It's more a you're not an authority on it. 
that much is known. In fact, that could be considered an immutable fact. And many of those that criticise you, which in turn you make free content from responding to, are critical of the fact that you espouse certain beliefs, but you contradict yourself quite often. And because you've put your struggles out there publicly now, many are bringing into question whether or not anything about you is legit, or if you are just another Amberlynn Reed, desperately wishing you were more like Nikocado Avocado, so funnier. So where is Tess Holiday now? On TikTok, bitching about any random comment she finds, criticizing her for the smallest thing that she has to blow out of proportion and use Google as her, um, save me source. And just to re-highlight something else I should have pointed out again, healthy fats. While there are healthy fats, one can safely say they are not healthy fats that you consume. 